Good morning and welcome to our year in giving live stream. I'm Eric Harrison and I'm your host this morning. Um, thank you so much for joining us and we have some special guests uh, with us today. Um, you know, if, if you're watching right now, you can like this right away. You can make a comment, uh, share it, um, but we're going to have just a fun uh, 25 minutes of, of conversation as we you know wrap up 2022. So first of all, I, I want to introduce one of our uh, newest board members, uh, Irene Bassick. She's also a founding member of our United Way Women of Tocqueville. So welcome, Irene. Hi, how you doing, Eric? Good, how are you? Doing fine on this great morning. Yeah. So uh, I, Irene and I were talking about our, our holiday plans. Um, we have some friends coming from out of town and, and she offered me the, uh, her paella pan. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> but um, I, 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 I get I, leftovers. <laughs> OK, all right. We'll, we'll get some leftovers as well. Um, but yeah, on, on a more serious note, um, I, I've had the fortune of getting to know Irene a little bit better. And uh, we did an event earlier. Um, this fall, our, our, our Stephanie Land event um, with our Women of Tocqueville Society. But um, Irene, I was just hoping you could just share a little bit about your story. You know, I know that, that you came from an Alice family, which United, it's a United Way coined term for asset limited income constrained and employed. Um, so you can tell us just a little bit about that and, and also how you just kind of get that, that, that experience got you more connected to your profession and also just philanthropy in general. Yeah, th thanks, Eric. And uh, yeah, you know, it, I didn't realize that I had been in an Alice family until I started working with United Way and first heard the term used several years ago. And it dawned on me that, wow, that explains and describes the situation that um, I grew up in. Um, I fortunately had uh, parents who were married. Um, I always had a roof over my head. Um, my parents were always employed, but working several different jobs. My father was, um, uh, he had a very difficult time holding down continuous employment. And so therefore my family moved quite a bit. I think I went to eight different elementary schools all around the United States. We would just pick up and leave and go someplace else where there were opportunities. And things got so bad that my family, in fact, uh, picked up and moved from Florida and came back to Connecticut uh, because our family was here. And that's one thing that made it a little bit different for, our, for my particular situation was that um, we had family and we could stay with people and we always had that support system. But at a very early age, um, I was working multiple jobs before I was, I think, legally even able to work. And my parents were living parent, uh, paycheck to paycheck. Um, you know, always concerned that the cars would break down and we'd be without transportation. So fast forward, and um, I'm a lawyer. Um, I'm very uh, comfortable financially. And when I started working with United Way and hearing the descriptions of other families going through situations that were even worse than what I had lived through, I realized that it wouldn't take much um, either money or time for me to make a difference. And um, I think my first initial thought about that was I wanted to make sure that my children who grew up in West Hartford with a very um, solid <laughs> financial footing um, understood how fortunate they were. And so I started off by um, volunteering with them often. And then I made the big leap last year um, with a financial commitment to support the United Way uh, by joining Tocqueville. And um, the way I viewed it was, you know, this is something that I can do. I chose United Way because it is, in my view, it's a gold star organization. I know where the money is going. I don't have to shop around and guess. It gives me that comfort that I know that I can directly make an impact in the community. Yeah. Well, we, we're so grateful to have you and we're grateful to have your leadership on our board of directors. You know, that, I think that's that's just such a an additional step, right, volunteer wise, because I'm sure you're yeah. very busy in your day to day profession and, and socially. So appreciate all of your time on that end, too. I was just thinking about, you know, we, when you know, with your legal background, just kind of thinking about sort of public policy and advocacy, what what, what type of changes do you think that, you know, we, we should be considering? You know, you, we have the pandemic that's coupled by inflation right now? And, and you know, how, how are people ever going to get ahead? That's a great question. 
I think that we're all trying to gain our footing here. Um, one of the big changes, I think, to the legislative landscape um, was the fact that we passed not only paid sick leave, but paid family medical leave. And that was that's a huge uh, shift. I'm an employment attorney and I represent individuals. So I actually see what happens when people lose their jobs. Um, but there are yeah. so many different legislative proposals that are out um, for, for consideration. And, you know, I, it, the list goes on and on. I think I once read off like 30 different initiatives at a, a recent event that um, we could have influence over. And it's not hard to do. It's simply contacting your legislator and offering to write a letter maybe even speak at a hearing, which is so easy. People will support you all the way. This is not something where you have to uh, bravely go forward on your own. The great thing about United Way is that you just raise your hand and you say, I have a story to share, or I want to help. And your team just comes in and just makes it easy for all of us. But yes, there are a lot of things in the works at the state legis uh, legislature. And the way to move these um, efforts forward is to actually get involved and speak up. Um, it takes more voices at the table to push these initiatives forward. And that's critical to succeeding and making um, everything that resulted from COVID um, better for the community. I mean, it's taken a very bad hit um, in the last three years. So I'm, I'm just curious because I, I think about this, you know, with myself as well in terms of, you know, having a career in service, but where, where did you think you, you, you got this, you know, wanting to, wanting to volunteer, wanting to advocate, wanting to, wanting to give back? Where'd that come from? Oh my God. I don't know. I, I was a girl. Scout. <laughs> I was a girl scout. <laughs> a girl scout. Okay. <laughs> Someone once told me um, recently, I, they told me in a hospital setting that most of the donors who give um, liver or body part donations are lawyers mm -hmm. because they have guilt about how bad they're viewed. <laughs> they want to be viewed nicely. I honestly don't know. Um, it could be because um, I see so much bad things happen in my job um, that I feel that um, I, I feel like I'm in a good position where I can make some changes, but I guess it also comes from the fact that, um, you know, I was a Girl Scout. My mom volunteered um, and we had that instilled very early, you know, growing up. And mm -hmm. um, I don't think it just comes out of nowhere. I think a lot of times you follow after seeing someone else set an example. So it was probably my mother. That's awesome. Yeah. Any, any, any uh, words to our, our viewers in terms of, you know, you know, in, inspiring giving at the, at the end of the year? Yeah. You know, I, I, I love gift giving and I love giving presents to um, <laughs> my family and to yeah. friends. I love bringing joy and I love um, playing it forward. Um, to those of you who are considering a year end donation, anything counts. Um, it doesn't have to be a lot, but, um, you know, people always put it in terms of a cup of coffee or a latte, you know, at Starbucks and just think about what you're spending money on right now. And when you put that in terms of what it can do for our programming and especially administration, getting all this stuff together for all the charities out there. Uh, the folks at the United Way, you know, they've got systems that they have to maintain. They've got to keep the lights on. And, and a lot of times that's really hard to get funding specified for. So you, when you think about all the different ways that just a couple dollars uh, can actually be used, um, it, it really, in the large scheme of things, isn't hard to do. I mean, if you have the means, why not? Why not? Um, I, I invite you to join our larger family and um, know that your dollars are being put to work. Well, thank you so much, Irene. And I, I did receive a text from my husband that we'll take you up on the paella pan. So <laughs> I, I will reach out to you uh, af after our live stream today. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay. <laughs> so thank you. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Eric. And happy new year. Happy new year. Okay. All right. Well, now we're up to our next guest, who I'm really excited to introduce as well, who I had the pleasure of meeting uh, earlier this fall. And this that is uh, Jane Banks, and she is the executive director of South Park Inn. Welcome, Jane. 
Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning, Jane. How have you been? Great. Great. Yeah. Thank you. You have a, a good holiday? Had a great holiday. Had family and friends over. It was quite lovely. Oh, great. Uh, it would have been nice. It was a little bit colder and some snow, but you know, it's New England. We'll get there. Okay. <laughs> well, we were we were in uh, Cincinnati, and they they really never get snow, and they had five inches, and it was below zero. So um, it, we we definitely had our white Christmas. Good for you. <laughs> so so Jane, I was hoping that you could just you know let us all know about you know South Park in uh, vision and 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 about the work that you do in the community. Sure. So, you know, our, our overall mission is really sort of to improve the, the, our community by um, having equal access for anybody who needs shelter services and really sort of solutions to homelessness to make it rare, brief and non reoccurring. And we've been in business since 1984. We have an emergency shelter where we serve men and women who are homeless and that's through DOH contract. Prior to the pandemic, we did serve families as well. We've pushed the pause button on that because through the pandemic, it was really challenging to be able to serve families and having such a mixed population within a congregate environment. So we have pushed the pause button on that. We also have a veteran services program. So we have um, uh, um, occupancy for 15 veterans who are ho homeless and looking for you know, housing and, and connecting them to other resources within the community. And we have a respite uh, program that is a step down from the hospitals, St. Francis and Hartford Healthcare for folks who are literally homeless at discharge and need a place to go and still need some support um, through some nursing care and some stabilization. So we provide those services as well. This year we started uh, new through some COVID funding and CARES Act uh, money, uh, the prevention program. So that's a community-based program for folks who um, are, we're trying to keep from becoming homeless and working with community landlords and other resources to keep people connected or get them rehoused as quickly as possible. The other thing that we're doing this year for the first time ever, South Park Inn is, um, has the contract with the city of Hartford to run the warming center. And that um, we opened up the warming center on December 1st. We'll run it through April 1st of this year. And so far we've been at capacity each night. We have 45 beds. And then we work with some of the other shelter providers and other warming centers across the region to make sure that if we're at capacity that other folks can, you know, shelter them. So South again, for example, has overflow um, space in our, in our shelter to be able to take some folks that we might not be able to take at, um, at the warming center. We work with Emma Care and so some of the other programs as well. So that's sort of, that's us in a nutshell. I think yeah. that one of the things about South Park Inn that, um, we really work hard at is we're a low barrier shelter, which means that we really start, we work with individuals that are coming into the shelter system to reduce some of those barriers, right? So you don't have to be sober. You can be actively using, if you have a service animal, animal or a comfort animal, or just your pet, because mm -hmm. I'm a big pet person, right? Um, yeah. we, we try to make those accommodations for people so that people are not staying out in the cold because they're actively using or because they have a service animal or because whatever their because is, right? We try to work with that person to be able to mitigate some of that stuff so that they can come in off the streets. That's just great. So, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a similar question to you that I asked Irene. How what 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 makes Jane Jane? Like what 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 inspired you to get involved in this work and to be an advocate for the homeless? Jeez, I have been I've been doing this work for 25 years between Massachusetts and now Connecticut. And um I think that there's nothing, there's nothing for me, anyways, as it relates to work than working with people and their right. stories and and what they bring to the table like people become homeless for for a myriad of reasons right and it, and it's not just it's not always oh this is this person's a bum and so you know they started using so they've lost people have lost their housing and their homes for you know health reasons 
right? And they didn't have adequate health care or they didn't have adequate, you know, uh, financial resources or they lost their spouse or they lost their child and, and, and things just kind of unravel for people, right? When we look at our, our society and, and what we're facing every day, people can become homeless for so many different reasons. And I think that as as a community member, as a leader, as somebody who lives in a neighborhood who, you know, we see people changing all the time. This work is just incredible to keep people safe, mm -hmm. right? Like we should all be invested in how we take care of each other as a community and as a society, right? And I think that we're in a time right now where that's really challenging. And I think you know, when I was thinking about this particular call today, right, and this yep. call to action, you know, the United Way is that place where people can make their contribution, whether it's a financial contribution or volunteering, and it has such a significant impact within the community that you live and work, right, or you live in or you work in, whatever that looks like. And so, you know, for South Park Inn, it's, you know, people come and volunteer for us. United Way sort of corrals everybody together, pulls folks together, pulls teams together, and they provide meals for our folks. They cook for our folks. They help us organize things. I mean, it's it's all of that community community fulfillment that brings me to the table every day, right? That That is really sort of forward thinking about how do we bring people in to help educate them around, for me, homelessness, right? And what it means to take care of somebody who's in our care and what that looks like. And so that's important and getting that word out to anybody in our community is really important. It's important that we understand why somebody might be living on the streets. It's important that we understand that people who have addiction issues or mental health issues or behavioral issues are just as important and valuable as anybody else. And there's somebody, someone, right? Those are the things that sort of drive me every day. Yeah. Well, I, I, I definitely share that, you know, I, I worked in the homelessness and housing space in, in California. And, you know, one of the things that kind of surprised me, um, and it was always a challenge, I think one, you already mentioned it, right, which is, you know, changing the face of homelessness, what that face looks like, the complexity of that. Um, and then also a sense of urgency, right? These we, we have people that are cold. We have people that do not have a place to sleep. Um, and how can you get back on your feet or have any sort of sense of stability without a roof over your head? Right. Anything and else? Just, yeah, go ahead. Well, I just think it's just, it's so important that when we, when we go home from work at night, like when I come home, we have homes, right? We, we get to go home every single night. Right. And when you're thinking about this end of the year contribution, the contribution to the United Way is really the impact to your community. And thinking about, you have to think about what would happen if I lost my home? Like, where would I be and how would I survive? And I think that's so important to thinking about how you invest your dollars and your time in your community and through the United Way is because we make a difference, you make a difference, you help us to make a difference. Like it's a partnership across the board from the United Way to the, to the providers, to the community members, to the donors, to the volunteers, to the folks that we serve, right? It becomes this full circle partnership. And that's the most important thing that I think people need to understand when it comes to your donation or your time to the United Way is that it comes full circle and you become a part of the solution at the end of the day. Have you, I was just, I was just wondering on the volunteerism side, have you noticed a difference when you've had volunteers come in? Have, have, have you seen sort of a shift of, you know, kind of, you know, being exposed to the work during the day? It may, may not be immediate, but may, may, maybe, you know, return volunteers or 
Uh, We've had some return. Well, so we do have return volunteers and we have volunteers who, you know, when, um, when we're talking with volunteers uh, who have come to do, you know, a yard project or help us organize the facility that we have next door, right. That yeah. want to work with us or, you know, maybe become a board member or mm-hmm. they get their friends to do some, you know, some volunteer work. So it becomes this bigger community. And so, and we have, you know, we have a, a director of development who will work with those folks, to kind of bring them into the fold, right? Because everything, everything a donor does. So a donor is not just a financial donor, right? You're a donor of your time yep. and your in-kind in your in-kind donations and your financial donations. And so all of those things um, have such an impact in our work. And I think that that's the thing that the volunteers see is that they're having a significant in, in, impact into our work and we have an impact into our guests' work, right? And they get to see and meet people who we're serving. You know, so if you are, if you come into South Park Inn and you're doing, um, you're, and you, be, you create yourself a little meal group and you're gonna, you know, provide a meal and serve a meal to folks, you get to meet our guests and you get to sort of see them in a, in I think a different light. And that has a big impact on volunteers and them wanting to come back and do more or do something different or, you know, come by themselves and do something. So it's really, it's quite interesting to watch how volunteers can kind of evolve over time. Any last minute thoughts? My last minute thought is please donate to the United Way. We have two days left. (laughs) We have today and we have Saturday, right? Yes, we do. And I think that people's donation um, just has such an impact on how our community is successful in all of the human service work that the United Way supports. All of our partners in the United Way, our work is critical to the fabric of, of our communities and our success. And our success means that you're successful and and vice versa, right? So it's like a give and take. So please, during these last sort of 24 hours, give or take. Around that, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just think about donating to the United Way. Thank you so much, Jane. Thank you. Pleasure to see you again. Nice to see you as well. Yes, $1,000 can keep a family out of shelter and in their home. $100 can provide a family with utility assistance. Um, for a month to keep the lights on. Every donation adds up. Uh, UnitedWayInc.org slash donate. You can get on our website online. Um, there's us, click the blue button uh, at the top of our Facebook fa- page and Facebook meta is matching donations up to $100 for new recurring donors until tomorrow. So set up for a recurring donation and uh, Facebook will be matching that. Thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful, wonderful and joyous and prosperous new year. And we'll see you in 2023.